Hi guys, I'm Iris there. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing celebrities and millennial business leaders and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is award-winning music superstar Orezi. He's the CEO of Genge Music and he's been giving us hits like Rihanna, Ijo Wakanda, Hallelujah and Double Your Hustle. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Orezi Superstar. Thank you for coming on the bridge. We're so happy to have you. So just a few things before you're being a comedian. <laughs> the point of the show is to show like the business model and the financial decisions behind creating a brand like Orezi. Okay. You're one of the most consistent music stars that we have in this country. And you know, you've built a huge brand. And I want a young person that's looking at this interview or watching this interview and is like, ah, Orezi, you know, he's done a lot. I want to be able to emulate him. But what are the financial decisions that got him there? So how did you start this whole music thing? Um, how did I start? I started music with like every other regular guy. I was um, that guy that I used to just record demo on the street. I got signed to someone in um, 2009. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, 2010, 2010. Um, I got signed to that label as an upcoming artist. Then um, I moved from that label to another label in 2013. Okay. Then in um, 2018, currently I opened my own label. So that's okay. pretty much like uh, a summary of my journey. So um, did it, what, what kind of capital did it require? So obviously the music, the record label signed you. So yeah. was it them investing in yeah, you or yeah. the are way, there the, other things that you have to invest no, in? No, no, no. Uh, from the start, from the get go, they were, they were investing. Mm -hmm. I don't have an idea of how much, but okay. like two thousand baht, like an average sum. Because we shot about, they shot about three videos for me. Mm. Two of them were shot in South Africa, which was an average of um, ten thousand dollars. That time dollars still good. So yes. ten thousand dollars like one point five. Yeah. Like now that's like three point. So, so then uh, I had an average video of ten k, and I shot two mm. in ISIS, and I shot one here. Now that so, we're talking about videos, even like what I'd like to know is the process and the monetary implications um, of every stage of that process. So a guy who has talent and I want to record, you know, a song or an EP or whatever, and then, you know, putting out a music video, talk to me about the monetary implications at every stage. Oh, okay, yeah, and, um, and every song in Nigeria, that's like a project, it's just mm -hmm. the audio to the video and also promotions. Mm -hmm. um, for an audio song, to make an audio, um, if it depends if you want to work with like the A-list producers, which is the first step is okay. of any audio production, get a producer, mm. get into a studio, then make a beat, then you sing, mm. then the mix and the master. So that's like the first process. So in for your audio recording, you want to work with an A-list producer when you're talking of the likes of Saz, Young John, yeah. you know, Don Jazzy, mm -hmm. you know, all these people are like the A-list producers. I think you should be looking at an average of 400,000 minimum 
Okay. Yeah, that's an average, you know, it keeps some of them Are more one million, two million. Yeah. That. But that's an average for that level. Some producers, you have them, they take 50, 70, 100, mm. you understand? So if so, you, is it, so is it advisable to work with like an up and coming sort no, of No, it depends, it depends, it depends on what, uh, uh, some young producers could give you a banging beat. Mm. Uh, sometimes you get into the studio with even the earliest producers and you say, don't and come it's out just with not them, It's all about the chemistry, you mm. understand? But, but for experience sake, sometimes it's safe. So, with the A-list. Because if you're yeah, going because, to invest that money, yeah, you might as well invest uh, yeah, it. Because they've walked down that. that, they've walked that road too many times. Mm. So they understand the kind of beat that the people will jump or want to vibe to. So they mm. just put you on that path. So it's easier. I love it. You know, so, so from so that, you do the master. You do, yeah, you, then when you master, master is an average of one between 80 to 150. So okay. if you add that up, we're talking already on, on 550. Then now you want to make a video. A good video, let's say a good video, you should be looking at a minimum of a million naira. A good video. In Nigeria? Yeah, in Nigeria. A minimum. That's the minimum. You could, some, you could get it for 1.5 to but a minimum of a good standard video. Video. That's that actually make it worthy. to like, yeah. yeah. That's airplay worthy for the MTV basis and trace, you know, and the likes. You, you should look at the minimum. So that's video. So we're talking about 1.6 averagely mm -hmm. and now you want to promote this song you should be looking at an average minimum of two million because promotion talked about audio yeah. radio tv you know all this club so minimum so a project should cost min, you cost looking you at about like four, four million minimum some okay, people so spend 10 15. <laughs> yeah. i see what you mean so on average four million to yeah. put out you know proper one, yeah, one, one song yeah one song that sounds super expensive so you're this young up and coming person you spent four million doing all of this stuff mm -hmm. right it's an investment yeah it's a cost yeah. so how much can they possibly make what what are the revenue streams you put out you mm. make this investment is a cost as in for the song what are the revenue streams that you can now use to get that money back mm. revenue streams getting money back that that's that's a function of how much a song did how mm. much demand, how much the people were demanding like the people you, like it. How much demand did you create with that particular song mm. as a function of that? And then um, should in case if you're lucky enough, it becomes a hit. Then the ways you can make your money from live performances, shows, mm. and uh, these days digital market is the end thing. That's where the majority of the money is even coming from. Okay. Like for those that are aware, those that know are in the know of that. You got media stores like iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Google Play. Um, so much of them out there. So let's talk about the shows because a lot of music people that I've spoken to recently have talked about how right now in Nigeria, before you even go to digital, mm -hmm. the money is really in shows and yeah. you know endorsements. Yeah. So with the show, I've spent four million naira, you know, investing in this song, putting it out. Now, how much can I make on average um, for on a show? Mm, average on a show. Depend, like I said, it's still, it's still a function of the demand. Mm. You know, for, for a new artist, if the song is big, it's a hit, then mm -hmm. you're looking at a starting point of like 300K. Okay. And even if it's not a hit, depends on how well your management is good to put your you in brand places. Is, your brand is, um, if the presence of your brand is put you in some. Because as an artist, the first places you want to perform are like university because those mm. are the first fan base. So when you go to this unit, you're looking at maybe 100, 150, 250, 300, mm. all these schools want to pay you to see you being a yeah. new artist that's the first place you want to touch base with them besides that you know it, it varies depends on the client there's actually a market value or a market price for you as a new artist mm. which is about 300 but if your song is that big and the elites or these people with so much money mm. so to say want to have you like show, super fans super, you understand they love you they want you mm -hmm. they'll pay for your service if you tell them three million they'll give you and that's how most of these labels or managers charge yeah because if if if, if somebody calls you for a show and they'll say i get one waiting for this come perform <laughs> say who be that say mr so 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 okay well yeah hello dangote's word daughter's word <laughs> you yourself not go and gawk yourself you know yeah. if you go tell dangote's uh, down with you know, to you okay. because you know it's it's wealthy enough to pay you 10 million, 5 million. Mm -hmm. So you call that and I tell you, ah, uh, 5 million, okay, I'll pay 3. You understand? So you see the difference between yeah. the regular guy wants to pay you a 300. But basically, if your song is a hit, you have the potential to, if you're what if is still hit, working, yeah, you have the you're potential gonna, to make it back. Back, like, because you get from the normal bookings of 300, you still get from the wealthy people because everybody wants to mm. see you. So 
the the percentage or the probability of you making your money back is very high mm. very very high you so let's talk about let's talk about digital distribution yeah. now there's a lot of tension when it comes to um that aspect of the the music business in nigeria particularly mm. so i found that you know globally we everyone has felt the changes in the music industry because the yeah. way we consume music has changed Change, yeah. right so even yeah. people like jay-z have created platforms like tidal right so when um there's a distribution platform that's offering you a distribution deal in nigeria it should be a no-brainer but i find that you know a lot of artists they sign these deals and then they go and they get re really upset and resentful. Yeah, off. So is it because they're not, and I've asked a lot of artists um, this question, is it because they feel like the structures that are in place are not fair to them? Or is it because they didn't really understand what they were signing in the first place? Yeah, it depends. Like, like it, some, some don't understand what they're signing. When you sign, maybe you sign a deal instead of you two, maybe what, what's coming to you is 40 mm -hmm. or 30, and the company is taking 70. Mm -hmm. Then now when you start collecting this 30 first time, second, you know, I feel like this 30 is no more enough, like mm. it's too small, but that's what you deserve. One money lesson that you have to share with an up and coming artist from your own journey? Um, okay, I would say, first things first, every artist within your own needs to understand that you can never be there forever. You can never be number one forever. Mm -hmm. There will always be that new guy at every point in time. You know, and uh, you know how it is. Like everybody's craving to see the new guy. You become yeah. old. You don't talk old school. No so if you spend all the money so now. So while you, while you are at your peak, while you are the most sought after artist, you should spend wisely and save money because as an artist, artists don't get pension. <laughs> <laughs> I just not get passion. Once the music stops popping, you are there. Yeah, there. And you know, the funny thing is because you're already celebrity and popular, you can't go and pick up a normal job. Mm. You understand? That's why you see most of them. It's hard to go back. Run, go, bro, go to McDonald's. Believe <laughs> uh, people don't know them. But while while in in the place where you live or country where you reside, it's it's not easy to go and pick up a regular but, but job. But is it a lot of pressure though? Is it a lot of pressure? Because I I feel like people get carried away with the societal pressure oh, yeah, and they make course. mistakes. Uh, of course, this yeah. is because when, you, when you're popular, everybody wants to be around you. All the mm. girls want to chill with you, want to party with you. This party costs money mm. when you go to the club. Unlike, mm. I don't know, maybe America or this country, sometimes when you go to the club, these people give you these drinks mm -hmm. for free. Or sometimes you, you get paid to come out every party. But isn't that, that happens possible? happens in Nigeria sometimes. Yeah, exactly. But you see some, uh, some, some people, when, when that's why, that should be the reason why you go out. Mm. Not when you are not being hosted or they're not spending, you want to go out and be spending your money. Because, because, you know, be spending because we now money. get caught up in the hype. So people want to spend money because they yeah. want to show that, want they, to have show that they have this money. But and they want to be in competition with maybe some other artists that's also yeah. spending money. And they want people to look at them with that same eye and in that same light. That meanwhile, you haven't made enough or you enough. haven't invested you enough haven't invested to be able to, just wanna, to sustain so that's it. That's why 10 years down the line, they're broke. 10 years down mm -hmm. the line, somebody can't pay his hospital bills. Mm. Then you understand? So these are the things because this artists, we actually do see a lot of money. Mm. Actually, they see a lot of money. One of the one of the one of the events that changed my life towards saving money mm. was me wanting to travel to. I think it was it was in America on the thing. <laughs> they told me to go and bring my back statement. You know, when you put your back statement down, I write the total money, was so. credit, and debit. So, and then, brother, I think for a period of six months, I think it was twenty it was last year. So for a period of six months, when I print that come out, I saw like maybe thirty two million. Mm. And my sister asked at the time where I printed that. <laughs> <laughs> I know Balance she, was I, not I, I know I get, I know I even get one million. So I felt like, yo, where did all this money, money go to? Go. You understand? So it's everybody is a victim. You can easily mm -hmm. get swayed. You understand and just fall victim. Definitely. Like, so and I think I think what's important is realizing that and then adjusting yourself. Exactly. So that is not. That's what happened to me. Maybe exactly. I, I, I cut down my excesses and I feel like okay. It's not I'm about act, feeling like you're because, blown. You understand? And because me, I actually blown. used to bash people say, ah, what did you do? Why didn't you save money? So mm. now I'll see my own self as well. I was like, ah, where is he? You save no, you save money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So every artist falls victim of it. Every artist. So it, it's just for them to realize mm. early enough while they're still in their prime. They don't realize when you know they make money again because now it's useless. So luckily, realize when you are still in your prime so you can just start saving the new one, the money that's coming. Okay, I love that story so much because there's so much to learn from it. But 
in your career i'm sure yeah. we've all made you know money mistakes mm -hmm. what's your biggest money mistake and how did you recover from it uh -huh. what did you learn from it ah, biggest money mistake and i think the biggest money mistake will always be that extravagant spending the lifestyle you know the girl the car, the lucky biggest the car, <laughs> the biggest, biggest the flying girls so. or different region <laughs> south africa one might even finish me but <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, 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 yeah. basically, um, biggest money mistake with me is spending money on irrelevant, extravagant mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Just want to be in the club, buy champagne. But over the years, because if you, if, if you, you, if, you if, I, if I calculate, if you calculate all this money over the years, how much you spend on drinking, mm -hmm. lifestyle, clothes, and the women, opportunity cost, you, and you're, you know, because and you could have been investing in assets that would be making money, making for more you money right for now. you. So. And, and all, all of us, every artist falls victim of mm -hmm. it because those things are in your face. Mm. The women are in your face. The champagne they are in your face. But you know the worst Club part? You know, face. we've talked about this many times yeah. and it's about a mindset. It's yeah. about understanding that you cannot tension me. You're tensioning yourself. Because me, I know where I'm yourself. going. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like, yeah. because but 10 like years said, down the takes, line, like I said, it takes time. It takes time for a lot of us. Because initially, when you become an artist, everything you just want to enjoy it mm. you you can't come into for the first day i want to enjoy this no but life. it's about finding a balance because yeah. he, he's always says now me i like the good life exactly but i'm also scared of be, being, being poor being, being so i need broke. to protect my financial exactly. future so uh, um, a lot of artists enjoy this lifestyle and forget mm. like i said the one thing that makes them continue spending money unnecessarily mm -hmm. is the fact that they think they'll always be there forever. Mm -hmm. So the earlier this artist have that at the back of Understand. your mind. If you, if, if you have that at the back of your mind every time, you would ease because you know that, okay, or more. Because every artist at some point in time, even when you are popping, yeah. there's that two months of drought that money yeah. and you are spending a lot. You, and then you, you, feel just, it. you feel it like, yo, God, when is the next show? When is the next <laughs> enjoyment the next day? Because at that point in time, you are broke. So imagine you are broke at the time where this money is no more coming. Where do you want to go <laughs> Okay, to? so we've talked about your biggest money mistake. What's the best investment you've ever made? Best investment I've made is, uh, I, me, I'm a landscape architect. <laughs> That's why I study. I'm into the built-up environment. So when I, I, I got to realize that the best, to me, I don't know if, I, I don't, I'm not going to be speaking generally. Yeah. I'm going to say for myself, but I feel like the best investment right now is on property okay so and that's that's like my best investment i'll put my money in some of them so i feel like that's my most um your best investment, best investment. okay so yeah. we've talked about the importance of financial discipline and saving and and investing alongside that you know lifestyle so but obviously we you know you like the good life you want to be able to spend yeah, some yeah. money and also i just opened my company can get music so that company <laughs> artists are going to come from that company and i'm going to be generating more money so even when i retire and I'm they'll still be money, making money so, for yeah. you so that's another good investment Fair open enough. this year go and check it out <laughs> can get music can get music guys okay so we've talked about saving and investing and the importance of financial discipline but balancing that with, you know, your spending habits. But it's still important to spend yeah, you still yeah, want because to, part you still want to business. enjoy your money. You even have to spend. So it's what part do of the you, business. So yeah, to be visible. What do you like spend. to splurge on? Like, what's, what if you had to splurge on anything when you make money? Man, like, what makes you super happy? What makes you super happy is just being in some nice resort, some nice island, just traveling. <laughs> I just did Yankee, you know, just did... Like, nah, the plan go, he busy, I don't understand. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't want to go splash the money. Yes, yes, <laughs> so I love I, it. So, I, I, I love traveling because I also learn from traveling. As an mm. artist that I am, most of, most of the songs, most of the songs I've written in my life, most, a lot of them have been on the plane. Mm. I've been on the plane, a dry road trip, you understand? Because so, there's something about traveling that yeah. just sort of opens it your opens mind. It opens your mind. And when you, when you travel as, an, as, as a person, even as an artist, mm -hmm. when you're away from home, you seem to forget all your problems. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it gives it gives your mind a breathing space to just be able to think of new ideas and stuff. Yeah. And when you come out, you feel refreshed. So it helps your when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I just get some kind of small change, I like to just travel, disappear. That's fair understand? enough. So to round up, yeah. my last two questions. What is your smart money mantra? The, your investment philosophy, the absolute one thing that you must do with your money. <laughs> the one thing that you must do with your money. I feel like my own smart money mantra or philosophy would be 
save more than you spend. Okay, so yeah, save, save more, more than you spend. spend. That's a really good yeah, one. Save more than you spend because for 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 like you have a millionaire now. You, for someone like me, mm -hmm. that I'm my own sponsor. If I have like a millionaire, I put in like three hundred mm. or three fifty. I save. I put like another every 500 back into the business, business. then I spend like 200. That's a really good mantra. That's a so, really, really so good mantra. So for every time I, I, I put uh, I push on that certain percentage. So you've created a system around your money that money. works so every for time you. any money comes in, this goes to this place, this mm. goes to this place, this goes to this place. And you've done it in a way that it's systematically going towards building you know, your yeah, financial so because I know that all these guys can be guests. These are the guests' guests. It's for the Okay, so tell me, final question yeah. that we ask all our guests. If you got one billion naira, how would you spend it? How would you invest it? Yeah, one billion. If I have one billion naira, I think first thing, I, like I said, I'll, I'll spend it on the property. Mm -hmm. I'll buy like in a, in a high rise community. Mm -hmm. You know, I know like the money they. they so they like can get month. some rental income. Yeah, rental income. Like I always tell my friends, like I don't want to be. As a person, I'm not looking to be like the wealthiest or richest man in the world. Understand? But I want to just have that money that every year I set an income that takes care of me, my wife, my kids. My kids can go for anywhere. Yeah, any you holiday they and, want. And you see, and you see, for those things to happen, it's not really like one billion. Yeah. You understand? Me, I want to have like first things first. Besides any other business, I want to have like three properties that three properties that go like. 12 flats yeah so imagine say i get 12 flat one 12 flat two 12 flat three you understand that's 1.5 rent that's 18 million a year, uh -huh. 18 million a year 18 million a year. so we're talking 54 million a year my children if you go you understand if you go somewhere that is going to chill so even if even if i don't have any other work mm -hmm. yes, i got that 54 million that's a very in. smart way yes, to think so i wish you that building. one billion this is one of yeah. the best answers that we've actually yeah. got so to three it. building and, I, and i'm okay so how would you yeah. spend Splurge. So you've told us how you're going to invest it. How will mm. you spend it? Apart from the Lagos high class girls no, and the no South African Lagos girls. Nobody girls. Nobody girls. All the things when they buy, you know, lifestyle, clothes. I like clothes a lot. Yes, you do. So I don't want to go chop money. But basically, how would I spend them? Well, like I said, I was spending travel. I want to be to a lot of places in this life. Yeah. And I don't even go 5%. So that's the only way till I die. I'll be I traveling. Love it. So I'm 60, 65. I'll still be checking Brazil. <laughs> Just to check all these regions. This boy is such a God creates God create different kind of people. Get you also girls. just explore. They have Brazilian girls. They have Romania. Yes, these people plenty. And they have Thank Romanian you, Orezi. Romanian Thank food. you. I have to go Thank you for food. coming on all the show. The <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Orezi, for coming on the show. Like, yeah. I really had the best time. Like, even with all your jokes and everything, yeah. I think that there's so many but I'm like, joking with lessons. A lot of demo. I know <laughs> yeah. there are lots of lessons that people yeah, can yeah. learn, some practical yeah. lessons that especially up and coming artists can learn from this episode. So thank you so much. I really appreciate gracias. it. God gracias, bless you. Gracias. VAT, value added tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. So Orezi was obviously quite the comedian in this episode, but with all the jokes that he had to tell, he had so many gems to drop. The three highlights for me were, one, stay hungry. It doesn't matter how well you're doing, you have to stay on your grind. You have to have a work ethic that matches the financial goals that you have for your life. Two, track your spending. Or as he gave an example of how it's easy to make money and spend money and then you're in a situation where you don't have enough to show for all the hard work that you've um, done. He pointed out an instance where he earned 32 million over a period 
and had to submit his bank statement and realize what have i done with all my money and this led him to correct you know this behavior the third highlight is don't get carried away with being you know a superstar you might be the number one hit maker today but in a few years it might be someone else that's new so in doing all the work that you're doing start saving and investing towards your financial future don't get carried away with the hype of today thank you for watching this episode Thank you.